hey you guys okay so here's part two um to this week's this week two october bible study series that we're doing guys this is week two and we're going to close out with endurance and perseverance faith and forgiveness in part one we talked about courage decisiveness discernment and employment and encouragement okay so i'm just going to dive in again please excuse the noise you guys know i'm out and they are doing something with the grass and things like that so let's jump into it with endurance and perseverance i'm gonna go to matthew 10 22 i did tell you guys the scriptures in the first video for you that want to take notes but matthew 10 i'm gonna go there now and i do have to flip guys in my bible so y'all could just you know continue to be patient with me matthew 10 is talking about jesus appoints 12 disciples he sends out the 12 right in verse 22 says and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake but he that endureth to the end shall be saved and if you kind of read this in full context i know many of you have and we do have a matthew series but he appointed the 12 and he sent them out and just paraphrasing really quick because i don't want to make this video too long he sent them forth he commanded them telling them to to go out you know um go rather to the lost sheep of the house of israel telling them not to go um the way of the gentiles and attending the samaritans enter you not but go to the lost sheep of israel and preach the kingdom of god is at hand he gave them commandments heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out devils freely you have received freely give and he was just telling them like what to expect on the journey what to take what not to take what to do what not to do like if, if you go into a house and um you salute it and speak peace to it but if it's not worthy let your peace return back to you and that is a word for somebody but and it was basically saying like if they don't whoever don't receive them and hear their words when they depart at that house shake off the dust from their feet because it was going to be better uh for sodom and gomorrah and the day of judgment before that city and he was basically telling them like he's sending them out as um you know sheep among wolves but be wise as serpents and harmless as doves and um just different things and he was just telling them different things like about the the um that they're going to be brought before um they got to be beware of men they're going to be delivered to the council and synagogues and governors and different things like that um you know they'll be brought before governors and kings for their sake for god's sake for a testimony against them and the gentiles and different things like that and how when they deliver them up don't when when they're delivered up like in the midst of trial that they're going through for, for the glory of jesus christ basically um don't worry about how it's going to work don't like paraphrase and don't worry about what they're going to say it's going to be given to them and we actually saw this in the book of acts and a lot throughout this bible but the lord had already told them what it was so that's a word for somebody and he told them and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake but he that endures to the end shall be saved um there's nothing new under the sun guys like ecclesiastes talks about you guys and this is a word for somebody if you're being persecuted or hated because of jesus name's sake you in good company that means you really in him for real because the bible says in the book of john that if you are a friend of this world you are enmity with the lord amen uh, it talks about it we did a whole john series but jesus it, jesus prayed for the disciple if you read like john 14 of uh, jesus comfort them and different things and uh, john 15 the vine and the branches and 16 and you know you want to if you love god you obey him in 14 and 17 jesus was praying and different things for himself and the disciples and different things like that so find encouragement in that don't let that shake you don't let that rock you you know look at this from a heavenly perspective look at what god is doing in the midst of for 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 his namesake concerning you look at this eternally don't just look at it temporally yes look at it temporally you will be rewarded as well but look at it more so for eternity because eternity is forever and you want to have peace with god and you want to be with him forever because forever is a long time people that go to hell you guys are going to be there forever forever will never end it will never ever end and like the bible says when you consider these light and momentary afflictions basically what we go through on this earth is not taken away from it because we really do go through things on this earth and deal with different things but the apostle paul I believe this apostle paul said when you when, when compared to these light and momentary afflictions and when, when you compare it to the glory it, it cannot be compared to the glory that will be revealed the glory that that heaven reward amen so continue to endure in the lord whatever god gave you to do he gonna strengthen you he gonna keep you his eyes on you his eyes on the sparrow his eyes on you you much more valuable to god than a sparrow amen as he take care of them he'll take care of you like it said in matthew chapter six okay romans five three through four is the next one i'm gonna really try not to make this long but i have to give all this out and i feel like the lord want me to mostly instead of leaving it in the description box or comments he need me to actually read it to you guys so i want to be obedient and do that romans 5 peace with god a comparison of adam and christ we have a roman series but verse um verses 5 3 through 4 let me read actually 1 through 4 
Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's an encouragement because so many people may not have peace. And this is a word for someone. Don't look at what they're doing. Don't look at what it looked like. Don't look at what they have. Look at what you and God have. Look at the fact that you have peace. Look at the fact that you have Jesus. Some people have different things, but they don't have no peace. People can't pay for peace. They can pay for different things, but you can't pay for peace. Amen. Spiritual is spiritual and natural is natural. And you're blessed because God has given you both. Amen. So that let that be a word of encouragement to somebody. So therefore being justified by what? By faith. Not through our own works. We justified by faith. We justified because we believe in Jesus Christ and his righteousness and what he did for us on Calvary Cross. Amen. How he was died and buried and raised to life again. But therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access. This is a word for somebody. By faith. And to this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. And you know this is not physical. It got to be spiritual. Amen. Because who wants to glory in tribulations? But we glory because we, we got to look at this spiritually, you guys. Amen. But we glory in tribulations also knowing that tribulation worketh what? Patience. Look at the different fruits of the spirit, right? And patience, which yeah, that's in Galatians as well, the fruits of the spirit, but it's building up godly fruit in us and godly character. Amen. Don't feel good at the time, but it's honoring the Lord and it's making us more like Christ. When we became Christians, it wasn't for us to be more like us. It was for us to be more like Christ, Christ-like. Amen. So knowing that tribulation work with patience and patience experience and experience hope. And let me read um, verse five. It says, and hope maketh, maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Okay, you guys. So first, um, second Corinthians four, six through 10 is the next one. I'm gonna go there now. Second Corinthians four is talking about Paul is never discouraged, even though he, he was, he was, you know, sometimes, but let me actually read. Um, I want to read all of this. I feel led to read all of this to, for somebody actually, hold on you guys. I'm gonna read this really quickly for somebody. Okay. You guys. All right. Second Corinthians four, no six, four through 10. But that was one that I just, um, I want to read. I want to actually read second Corinthians chapter four. I am going to read second Corinthians six, four through 10 first, but I feel led to read all the four for somebody. So verses six through 10 is we are God's servants, Christians in their relationships. And verses four through 10 says, but in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience, in affliction, in necessities, in distresses, in scribes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, and fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the word of, of God, by the power of God, by the arm of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold, we live as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. Okay, and it's talking about that they are workers together with him. Amen. Don't receive the grace of God in vain. And he was talking about so, some other things like give no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. And then it kept going. But let me read chapter four. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced. Because we're talking about endurance, perseverance, you guys, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine up unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Someone needs to put a butt this morning. But it's dealing with interjection, you guys. 
a but father a but someone is the father god said for someone this morning you may be feeling like that but you choose to rejoice in the lord you may be dealing with this but you choose to make your soul boast in the lord your god you choose to praise him you choose to pray you choose to fast you choose to believe god you choose to be kind you choose to be loving you choose to seek him you choose to worship in the midst of any way that is a word for somebody what is your but this morning you may have not seen it yet but it's on the way amen they may have did that to you but better is coming brighter is coming come on whatever your butt is for you amen amen okay persecuted but not forsaken cast down but not destroyed always bearing about in the body the dying of the lord jesus that the life also of jesus might be made manifest in our body for we which live are always delivered unto death for jesus sake that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us, raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through, through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is, is what renewed day by day for our light affliction. This is this is the one I was telling you guys about, but I didn't know exactly where it was in this in this. But I knew it was here, but I didn't know exactly where it was. So the Lord, it just let me see this for our light affliction, which is but for a moment worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal way to glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen, you guys. So um, next we're going to go to James 1 12. We did read James 1 a little bit of it. Um, and the other one, I'm just going to read verse 12 here. And it says, blessed is the man that endure temptation for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Again, James 1 is talking about rejoice under trials, you guys. All right, let's go now to um, faith. We got two more topics to go. I'm gonna try to go through this quickly. Faith and forgiveness. I'm not rushing, but I do need to get back on the road, you guys. Um, Romans, I'm gonna go to Romans 3, 27 through 31. Let me find that. Romans chapter three is talking about um, everyone is a sinner. God's approval is a gift. Okay, but verses um, 27 through 31, it says, where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. And like I said, you guys can read these in full context or check out the Bible studies where we read all each chapter like fully but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yet we establish the law. Okay, and you can read that, like I said, in full context. But that's talking about faith. Ephesians 6, 16. Ephesians 6, 16. Let me go there. But like I said, 6, well, we read a little bit from 6 um, in the other one, but it's talking about advice to children and parents, advice to servants and masters, put on the armor of God and final greetings. But verse 16 says, above all, taking the shield of faith. This is dealing with put on the full armor of God. Like verses 10 through 20 and different things like that. Um, like verses 6, verses 10 through 18. But it says, verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and when you think of these this armor that's like if you would um fight or go to battle physically you would boot up you would be suited up you'll be ready to go so spiritually you got to put on armor also we have um come from ephesians 6 many times we have a lot of videos referencing that the armor of god and how it relates to us physically and especially spiritually because it's the armor of god but i'm just going to leave that there with verse 16 so let's go to hebrews 12 1 through 2 is the next one you guys Hebrews 12 is talking about we must persevere in faith. We have a Hebrew series. I'm not going to read all of this. I'm just going to read um, verses 1 through 2. Okay. Wherefore, seeing we also, but if you want to read it, I encourage you to do so. It's like 29 um, verses and it's very encouraging. But verses 1 through 2 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great 
a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. This is a word for someone. God did not does not have you out here just to have you out here. He is the author and finisher of your faith. The God that called you here will continue to guide you. Excuse me, you guys. He'll continue to lead you. He, he'll continue to keep you because he is the what? He's the author and finisher of your faith. Okay, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen, you guys. So you must persevere in faith. Even Hebrews 11 is very encouraging because it's talking about faith exemplified. And it talks about um, faith and different people by faith, what they did and just different things that was happening by faith. So um, if you do have time, you know, this week or today or whenever, you guys can read Hebrews 11 and 12 in your, um, you know, your own personal time. I know many of you have read it, but it doesn't hurt to read it again because it's very encouraging. We can always grow every day by the word of God. I love that about God's word. You could read something over and over again and he'll give you different downloads and revelations on it. So first Peter, we have a Peter series. It's talking about God's many mercies. Salvation was prophesied, hope in God's mercy and love each other. But verse seven says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. And then um, 8 through 9, I got to read it because it has those dots. Whom having not seen, ye love, and whom though now ye see him not, ye yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Okay, so um, that's it for faith. We're going to move on to forgiveness, you guys. Isaiah 118, let me go there. Isaiah 118. You guys, I really want to go get a coffee. So I have so much to do today. I might go get it really quick and then get on the road. Like after I get it, I can, I really want to go get an iced coffee. Okay, Isaiah is talking about, Isaiah describes Judah's rebellion, Israel's corrupt religion, Isaiah exhorts Israel to repentance in Jerusalem's future. But verse 18, and we have Isaiah 6, like I said, let me read one through, um, let me read one through 20. I mean, 16 through 20, but 18 is a highlight verse, you guys. Mm -hmm. So 18, let me read that first. Come now and let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. But let me read 16 through 20. Wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. 19 through 20. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. 20. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Okay, Ezekiel 36, 25 is the next one. Ezekiel 35 is judgment on Edom. And um, I'm sorry, Ezekiel 36, that's Ezekiel 35. Ezekiel 36, 25. Ezekiel 36 is talking about blessings for Israel. Israel was rejected because of sin. But verse 25 says, then I will sprinkle, because let me read 24. Let me read 23 through um, 26. It's just so good. I just love reading the Bible. Okay, hold on. 23. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, said the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Here's 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. 26. A new heart also will I give you in a new spirit and I will put within you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you an heart of flesh here's 27 through 28 and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and ye shall keep my judgments and do them and ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers and ye shall be my people and I shall be your God okay and you guys can keep reading that but it's talking about um this that's Ezekiel um 36 Okay, we got a few more to read. Acts 13, 38 through 39. 
x.